So for our gospel today, I'm going to need some help from all of you all, because this is the story of Lazarus and of Jesus resuscitating Lazarus and calling him out of the tomb. And I feel quite certain that my voice is not uh, powerful enough and doesn't have the, the sounds of heaven the way that Jesus' voice must have when he, when he called in and brought Lazarus uh, out of the tomb. So you'll see on page five in your bulletin, the second page of our reading, that there's a part that's in bold where Jesus is crying and say, uh, calling out and saying, Lazarus, come out. So I need you to join with that wherever you are, uh, nice and loud, so that uh, together we're going to sort of be that voice of heaven. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume, and wiped his feet with her hair, it was her brother Lazarus who was ill. And so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, uh, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? But Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. And after saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, oh, well, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, oh, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed, stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall not die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. 
the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. And so the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice altogether now, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. And many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So if you're following along with our bulletin, um, you surely have noticed that uh, we've added a little something special right here after the gospel. Um, and uh, I've also posted the link there in the, uh, in the, uh, in the chat there. It is a, a little cartoon. You see it there, hopefully. Let's see. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, cartoon strip that's drawn by Jim Wettstein over at uh, VU, um, and um, he always takes the readings for the, each week, Sunday's readings, and has two sheep who are sort of talking about them. One of them gets it and uh, understands and uh, what Jesus is getting at. The other one, not so much, uh, is a little, uh, a little more challenged with that. And they have this conversation about the readings. And when I saw this particular one for this week, I loved it and I thought uh, it knocked it out of the park. So just one sheep who gets it. And he says, so Lazarus was cooped up in a small room and waiting for Jesus. Are you kidding me? It's about right, right? By now, you are probably feeling cooped up, hemmed in, isolated, uh, so far out of routine that maybe you feel quarantined instead of quarantined. Thank you to a uh, commentator that I uh, uh, found that line from, quarantined. I saw somebody yesterday posted, um, I'm starting to understand why my pets uh, bolt outside whenever the front door is open. We are so out of routine that my dog hardly knows what to make of things. She likes having her people around, but she doesn't get her naps. And uh, with six and seven walks a day, because we're looking for that break and uh, to get outside of the house, uh, I think she likes it, but she's starting to get a little tired and she's approaching those walks a little differently. I'm still in favor of this, but uh, 
There are so many things that are different right now. And I saw in the news today, we've hit over a thousand positive uh, diagnoses, positive infections, positive tests just in our state of Indiana as of, uh, I think that that date was as of yesterday. We've had our first death in the region from COVID-19, from the coronavirus. Um, with all of these things, and then our epidemiologists and our scientists telling us that we are just at the beginning of this, and that for uh, this physical distancing that we're doing to be truly effective, it's got to go on for a good long while yet. Man, I'll bet we are feeling a little bit like that sheep in Jim's uh, in Jim's uh, cartoon uh, today, in a small room, waiting, staring at the walls, looking for rescue, waiting to be uh, set free from this, for things to change and to set us out from this, to, uh, um, <clears throat> we're ready to kind of come stumbling out our front door and maybe it's not the linen wrappings, maybe it's all that toilet paper that we bought sort of wrapped around us and around our face and we kind of stumble out as Jesus calls us. We're looking for rescue and waiting for it, and we're starting to get kind of stinky because we've been inside for far too long. So maybe we're feeling a bit like Lazarus here, huh? Or maybe some days, as we read the papers and watch TV and we're in this uh, this time, maybe we feel a little more like uh, uh, Martha and Mary's friends, the ones that were there with, with them. They're doing the right thing. They've come to mourn with them and support them. But as they see this and see with Jesus, uh, see them kind of confront Jesus with their feelings, the friends are saying, well, if Jesus was really with us, couldn't he have stopped this virus in our, in the tracks? Some days we can feel like that and uh, not quite sure where we're looking for hope. And this one is tricky, right? That particular one can kind of morph and twist on us and turn into this sort of pseudo-Christian macho reaction that uh, has the saying, well, we should, be with, we should be willing to sacrifice ourselves and such like that. But, but it is important to remember that with Jesus, there is no such thing as disposable people. Or maybe in this time we feel like Martha and Mary, heartbroken, angry, weeping. And maybe we want to, like Martha and Mary, get in Jesus' face a little bit and sort of uh, tell him what we're really feeling. Lord, if you had been here, we wouldn't have to shelter in place. Lord, if you had been here, we wouldn't have the first death in our region. Or maybe sometimes we feel like Thomas. Now it's interesting, right? This is the same guy that is often called Doubting Thomas, but I don't think so. Because Thomas here is the one who is listening to Jesus. He's sort of the practical one. And he says, well, If Jesus is gone, then we better go too so we can die with him. That's not a doubter, is it? If that's where Jesus is going, let's go so we can die too. And maybe we feel like that when uh, we just have on those days when we just absolutely have to get to the grocery store and it sounds about right for us to be saying, well, we got to eat. Let's go so we can die too. Now, I'm not really. But the truth is, we can find ourselves all over the place in this gospel, can't we? There's a lot in this that resonates with us. And I think that's what Jim was getting to with that that comic and his sheep friend. There's a lot of places that resonate for us. And it makes sense. On any given day, each of us is the sort of whole mixture of people that Jesus encounters throughout the gospels. But notice what Jesus is doing. Pay attention to Jesus in this. Here's the thing. Jesus didn't have to go to Bethany. Jesus didn't have to go 
to Mary and Martha. Even if he went, he didn't have to go to them first, did he? The Gospel of John says that these are some of his best friends and that he loves them. And Lazarus is loved enough by Jesus that his whole title is, He Whom You Love. Jesus knows this town. It's tiny. He knows where the graveyard is. Jesus could have gone straight there. Jesus could have gone to the tomb before Martha and Mary and had his disciples roll back the stone and and then he could have brought Jesus out and as he came to Martha and Mary's house, say, hey, look who I found just lying around. But Jesus does not. There are no disposable people with Jesus. Not Mary and Martha, not Lazarus, not their friends and fellow mourners. And Jesus goes where it's hurting. He goes where they are weeping. He goes where they are afraid and heartbroken. Jesus goes where they want, no, they need to ask hard questions. And Jesus weeps with them. Jesus walks with them. And when they come to that tomb and Martha standing there, her heart broken yet again, saying to herself, am I I really going to have to do this? Is he really going to put me through this? She's not talking about the stink for Jesus' sake. She's saying, Jesus, are you really going to make me stand here and go through this again? Lord, don't you know? There's a stench here. Are you going to put, make me go through this? It is Jesus who is there, right there with her. Because you see, with Jesus, death and separation do not have the last word. With Jesus, death is not the last thing or even the worst thing. With Jesus... As God with us, Messiah, Emmanuel, Jesus is right with us. And that's the point. Jesus with us, whatever it is that we are going through. And Jesus, who will not leave us, no matter what it is that we are going through or how we're feeling or what happens. Jesus is right there in our houses Jesus is right there in our isolation and our loneliness. Jesus is right there in our hospital rooms. And yes, Jesus is right there in our tombs with us. On the cross, Jesus showed us there are no God-forsaken places. And there are no God-forsaken people. There, are, there is no such thing as a disposable person. <laughs> There's not even any such thing as social distancing. There's only Jesus, God with us, right there with us all along.